Hello again, everybody. This is Professor Bell with you, and we're looking at material for lab number two, when we're looking to find the uh, angle of the noon sun. Uh, so we're going to use a couple of things here that are new to you and try and teach you some aspects from the course as well. So uh, first and foremost, you're looking at an analemma on the right-hand side of your screen, and I'll walk you through it here in just a moment. It is found on a page in your textbook as well. Um, so you'll need to use this for your lab exercise. But the analemma basically charts where the direct rays of the sun are striking uh, on any spot of the earth at any time of the year. Do note that between 23 and a half degrees north latitude, the Tropic of Cancer, and 23 and a half degrees south latitude, the Tropic of Capricorn, Capricorn um, that's the only places where you'll get the sun directly overhead. Uh, anything outside of the tropics, we'll never see the sun overhead. So. Um, we're basically here at the 27th day of January, so if you were wanting to know exactly where the direct rays are striking, uh, they are on that latitude, 18 degrees south latitude. Okay, So that's how you would use this chart with the zero equator right here in the middle. Now what this is showing you is if you were at a spot at 40 degrees north latitude uh, at specific times of the year, we know, as you've been reading your textbook, there are equinoxes that happen in the spring for March in the Northern Hemisphere, uh, and then for the autumn for uh, in September. So what this means is the direct rays of the sun are striking on the equator at that time, here and here, and that means because of the equator equal, equal night, equinox. So every place on Earth has 12 hours of daylight and darkness. It gets much different depending on how close or far away you are from one of the solstices. So in the in the northern hemisphere summer, of course, sun is very high in our sky. If you were at 40 degrees north, you would see, well, any place north of the equator, that the sun will rise north of east, track across the sky, and then set north of west. Okay? But if it's, and that's the longest day of the year in the northern hemisphere, the beginning of summer, the beginning of winter, which happens December 20. First, the winter solstice, uh, shortest day of the year, uh, the sun sets south of east, tracks across the sky, and sets south of west. So you see the, the solar angle is very low during the winter uh, and very high during the summer for any place in the northern hemisphere, but especially the farther north you go. Okay. Now, you see these two terms, perihelion and aphelion, so we want to look at those real quick. Uh, oh, wait, I'm sorry, I had this uh, up first. I wanted to show you real quick, uh, if you had the question of, well, why is it this funky, you know, uh, snowman uh, number eight look to it? It has to do with uh, the laws of planetary motion, specifically the second one, the law of areas, and that the sun covers an equal area over equal periods of time. So the deal is, is that this is an ellipse that the, that the Earth goes around the sun. It's not a truly circular path, so that means it has two foci, okay? So at one part of the year, as we pointed out right here, January 3rd, we're, clo we're closest to the sun, and J uh, July 4th, we're farthest away. And I know that seems counterintuitive to you because you're like, wait a minute, if we're closer, shouldn't it be warmer? And the idea is that um, the distance has nothing to do. It's the tilt of the Earth on its axis, and that tilt, uh, is 23 and a half degrees. Anyway, point being though, is that at times we're closer to the sun and farther away, but if you look at how this is charted here from the sun and the area that's covered here to here, uh, that this is the same amount of, of um, periods of time if, if you're looking at the area in which it's covered. So that's that law of areas and the ellipse that we have, okay? So if you look at this uh, this from your textbook as well, it's showing you that our average distance from the sun is 93 million miles. So at near sun, para, near, helion, uh, we're at 91 and a half million miles, and at far sun, aphelion here, 94 and a half. So only a 3 million mile uh, difference uh, between the two, but it matters, okay? Uh, again, not for the seasons necessarily, but just so you know how uh, or why the analemma is, is got the funky shape that it has. So if I turn this, excuse me, oop, this graphic right here up on its head and show it to you like this, then that might make a little more sense of why the analemma looks like it looks, okay? So moving forward here, I want to show you how to calculate the the height of the sun above the horizon at noon for any place in the world. So one, I want to show you this. It's called the circle of illumination. And you can tell by the tilt of the Earth from its perpendicular. Again, it's 23 and a half degrees, uh, which 
then means it's no mystery. You would know equator, that's zero. That's our baseline. 23 and a half degrees north, Tropic of Cancer. 23 and a half degrees south, Tropic of Capricorn. Subtract 23 and a half degrees from the North Pole, 90, and you get the Arctic Circle, Arctic, named after bears, Arctus for the polar bears, and then Antarctus, no bears down here. Uh, so when you look at the Antarctic Circle, again, 90 minus the 23 and a half degree tilt gives you 66 and a half degrees, so you get your Arctic and Antarctic circles. So seasonally speaking, you would get in this area right here, the tropics, okay, which don't change much by daylight. You can tell even at this most extreme, their days aren't that far apart from, you know, north to south across there. So really all you get is a difference in the uh, tropical section of the earth is a wet season and a dry season. If you look at the mid latitudes here in the north and the south, we get our distinct four seasons, that is spring, summer, summer autumn, and winter. And then if you look at the the extremes of the poles here north of the arctic circle and south of the antarctic circle uh, you get six months of daylight and darkness uh, so it's really just daylight and night it's still frozen there because the angle of the sun the incidence of it the intensity of it's just not very uh, high so you don't see a lot of change there you i mean you do see melting and refreezing and stuff depending on the season but that's what the world looks like to you there so we're the direct rays striking on this situation. Well, it's telling you here the north is facing away from the sun. So this is around December. The direct rays are striking here at the Tropic of Capricorn. And so it's summer in the southern hemisphere, winter in the northern hemisphere, just like it is now. So if we look at, say, Gallatin, which is uh, 36 degrees north latitude, and we look at it for the day that I am recording this lecture, which is January 27th, what is the angle of the sun at noon? So what do we find here? Well, if we go down, uh, let me open this up for you right quick. Um, find the sun's declination on the LMA for that date. So we did that already, but let's do it again. January 27th, so 25, 26, 27. It's basically at 18 degrees south latitude. So that's what I'm going to call it. Okay. Now, the second step here is solving for the latitude and deciding, though, if it's a plus or a minus in that declination. Now, don't lose your mind right now. I'm going to provide a couple more examples for you. Just follow along with me real quick. But if you're, um, you're going to add if the latitude and the rays are in the opposite hemisphere, and you're going to subtract in this problem um, if they're in the same hemisphere. So our setting up here for the, uh, the noon sun, okay? is so 90 degrees minus, and now if you don't know, you're supposed to do whatever's in the parentheses first. So 36 was our location of Gallatin, and we decided it was a plus uh, because we see that we are adding if the latitude and the rays are in opposite hemispheres, okay? So, uh, the, hang on just a second, I lost myself all of a sudden, I apologize. So it is winter time here, so we know the sun is, is shining in the southern hemisphere, showing you this area, and that we're in the northern hemisphere. So again, add if you're in the opposite hemisphere. So that's why you see that plus sign there. There's my 18 that we got from finding the 27th, okay, uh, wherever I put that. Oh, right here, for January 27th. So. 36 plus 18 is what, 54, 90 minus 54 minus on the outside of the parentheses gives you 36 degrees. And so what does that say? What does that actually mean? To verbalize this, it just simply says in Gallatin, Tennessee, the noon sun was, is 36 degrees above the horizon on this day. So it's very low in the sky, low intensity, doesn't mean necessarily it's going to be blustery winter and snow, although they have it forecast for us today, and I really hope we see some. Anyway, uh, moving forward, uh, that's the that's the progression of things. So what I want to show you now is this. Um, you had this in your first lab, so I wanted to show you here uh, how it appears the sun works through your horizon. So if you're in the northern hemisphere, you have to look south. So ma imagine that you're in, at the North Pole. You have to look southward to see the sun. So you're looking southward now, and the sun rises in the east. So you're looking south, and that ri means it rises on your left hand, tracks in the east across the sky, and sets on your right hand in the west. But now check this out. That's in the north. If you're at the South Pole, you have to look north to see the sun, okay? Because it's shining within the arc, uh, within the uh, 
the uh, tropics. So the sun is going to rise in the east, but it's going to be on your right hand, track across the sky set in the west on your left. So what I want to show you is how the sun tracks differently in different hemispheres, which really confounds those flat earthers uh, <laughs> of how the motion works differently in the sky. So I'm going to pause this and queue up the videos and let you see what it looks like. So I hope I can get this to work. This is supposed to be the Arctic uh, fr from the northern hemisphere. So let's take a look at how the sun tracks across the sky here, okay? So uh, you're at the North Pole and you'll see, of course, that... Uh, let me turn this sound off. Um, but you can tell uh, as the sun tracks across the sky, when it hits its zenith up there, of course, that's noon. And now it's dropping down, 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 and it's going to be midnight here. Okay, so think about perpetual daylight in the northern hemisphere during our summer. And this is a really wild kind of thing. It almost seems like you're on another planet, right? That the sun is just flying around your head. There is, it ends the idea of uh, sunrise and sunset, does it not? Okay, now remember how you watch the sun in this part and then look at it from the Antarctic side, okay? So this one isn't as good as the other video, but uh, did, it will give you a look at how the sun appears differently in the southern hemisphere, how it rises and sets differently, even though it doesn't rise and really rise and set at all. I've got this speeded up too, so you can kind of see here. So never mind the, the, the clouds and stuff moving in, but there's your first sunset. <laughs> and then coming back to rise again. And notice that the path that the sun takes around you um, is very, very different. So sorry about the cut, but I want to cut off some of that, um, the commercials at the end. Anyway, I hope I've kind of shown you here what it looks like and um, how this kind of works. Look on the sheet for the lab uh, for, you know, the, the formulas again and uh, how, how um, how to do the problems, but I'm going to show you this as well to let you understand what it kind of looks like. Now, this protractor here is kind of showing you how we measure 0 to 180 and then 0 back to 180 again. So this is the southern hemisphere, northern hemisphere, and where does the sun appear at the equinox? Well, at the equinox, it's shining down on the equator. So North Pole, South Pole, equator. For the December solstice, we look at it like this. So this is measuring, by the way, uh, depending on if you're measuring from 0 up to 66.6 .6 or from 0 to 113.5, uh, okay? And vice versa here for the June solstice, this is where the sun would appear in the sky. And so um, to show you this right here kind of gives you the idea of what it might be like for solar noon at 90 degrees south. Of course, uh, the June solstice is, you're never going to see the June solstice. It's, you know, for the uh, for this area, it's, it's, it's out of, it's out of bounds. Same thing here for uh, 90 degrees north. If we're looking at, at it on a December solstice, you're, you're not going to see the sun. It's below the horizon. Uh, so if these kind of make sense to you, this is as high as the sun's going to get in the northern hemisphere, equally high in the southern hemisphere for when they're having summers. If you look at a place that's, say, uh, 23 and a half degrees south, like the uh, Tropic of Capricorn, then, you know, the, the the uh, equinox is going to look like this for you at when uh, it is a, a beginning of summertime there, which is December in the southern hemisphere, remember. It's going to be directly overhead. And then this is how low the sun gets at, uh, at the June solstice, the beginning of winter time for them. Okay, so all of these angles, I hope, make sense to you. Again, measuring from one side of the, or the other uh, on the protractor, but hopefully allowing you to visualize what the sun looks like, okay, At, above the horizon and how to track it. Again, looking on your lab document for your formulas to finish up, but I hope this video is illuminating since we were talking about the sun. All right, I'll leave on that very terrible joke. See you later.